What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, welcome back to another great unboxing video. Today we're going to be looking at AMT Ertl's 1970 Ford Galaxy Taxi model kit. What makes this one really cool is it is a four-door kit, so even if you don't want to build it as the taxi, you always have the option of building it as a stock of four-door family car. So, without further ado, let's go down to the bench and check out this amazing model with some really great features. Check out this cool box we have here. I love the artwork on this. What we've got is AMT's 1970 Ford Galaxy Taxi. And here we have a nice looking woman from the 1970s hailing down this great taxi cab, a Ford product with the four doors. This is the airport taxi service. And here in the background, you've got the airplane tower with a really cool looking futuristic style building. And right here we've got our big jumbo jet liner taking me away. And the girl also has a suitcase with all the different destinations that she's visited as stickers stuck on here. So this is a 125th scale model kit and includes one plastic kit, which is the car. Would have been wonderful if you got the figure as well. But uh, that sort of thing is for Masterbox to create, not AMT. Turning the box up on this side, we can see right away that we get the great big Boss 429 super engine. This is the NASCAR racing engine. And the reason why this thing is in here is not to get the fare before the competitor does. This is actually a carryover from the police model kit, which is what this car was originally molded as. And if you want to check out that unboxing, I've got it right here. But getting back to this, let's just uh, pretend that that is what this is for to get to that fair first. You got this great big air cleaner with the in induction here, the forced air induction on the top, which was a NASCAR kind of thing. But at any rate, we have the taxi meter, which is all brand new. We also have the taxi sign, which is a new component. And we've got the steel wheels, which is sort of carryover again from the police car. And you got the dog dish hubcaps, which pop into place. On this side of the box, we also have two new bonus pieces of luggage, which of course are the 1970s style with the chrome band and the fake plastic leatherette that was on there back in the day. And we've got new decals for our taxi, which also include two different instrument panels, one being wood grain and one being the chrome style. The bottom of the box also has silhouettes of the parts included inside, as well as the chrome tree and that decal sheet, and our luggage. This is a skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up, and will require glue and paint. Now let's open up the box and see just briefly what's inside. So we've got our instruction sheet, of course, a bag full of tires. The model is molded in yellow which might be a bit tricky if you want to paint this car white and red or white and green or something like that. There's the chassis pan underneath. We also have this bag of yellow parts right there. We've got our glass and our rear taillights, our chrome, and then the luggage molded in white plastic, as well as more yellow plastic components, which in this case is the engine block. And then down in the bottom of the box, we also have our decal sheet. And what is this? Metal axles and screws to put it together. So I will clear this out of the way and then we'll take a look at those instructions. This model kit is excellent if you're going to build a big diorama with all sorts of different city traffic in it. Because, of course, you always need a taxi somewhere. So there isn't really much of an illustration of the car or anything on the upper part of these instructions. If you want to see it, this is what you get. So really there's a read this before you begin and that's about it. So let's tear right into this engine build. So here we have a multi-piece engine, which looks fantastic actually. It says, special note, to easily identify parts, the numbers used on this instruction sheet match the numbers shown in the parts drawings on the bottom of the box. So again, really nice there that we've got that notification. So here we have the left and right hand side of the engine with the transmission molded in place. Then we have our cylinder heads which glue into place here and then the cylinder valve covers really. 
And these ones have the deep spark plugs going down there. We also have an oil breather cap up top. And then here we've got our air cleaner, our carburetor, and our intake manifold. We also have the coil and our distributor. Then here we have the radiator crossover pipes, which go onto the front of the cylinder heads. There's a left and right hand side of this as well, C2X, two times. And then we've got our exhaust manifold here, which again is a left and right hand side. We've got the oil pan, which is a separate piece, which is nice. And then our front water cover, or our water pump cover, I should say. And then we've got our pulleys here, we've got our fan, and our alternator goes down on the bottom. And then on this side of the engine, we've got a starter motor being glued into place. And all this will go together, paint it that nice Ford blue color, and you got it made. Panel 2 shows our chassis being assembled. This is a really basic one, it's a screw mount style, so much like a promotional model. So what we have here is our engine block being glued into place. We also, then we'll put our metal axle in. Here's our wheels and tires. Now, you do this four times. So these are basic promo style. You got your tire, the wheel pushes right through it, and then the dog dish hubcap gets glued in the center, and that goes into the metal axles. Then the entire, I don't know what you call this, this is a one piece. So you got your rear axle, your differential, your exhaust manifolds, your drive shaft, and the rear exhaust pipes, and all this sandwiches down right on that chassis. So really quick and easy to put together, and will look good once you clean up all the seam lines. Panel 3 shows our interior going together, and again, this is just a simple tub-type interior with the side door panels and the bench seat in the back, as well as your kick panel and everything else just molded as one piece. There's your package shelf in the back. Now there are paint color callouts which correspond to a paint chart off the side. So anyway, here we've got your front bench seat in two pieces being glued together. And then you've got your meter right here which is gluing onto the dashboard. And there are decals in here as well for the instrument panels. And you've got your steering wheel being glued into place. And then right here there is an optional part I'm not really sure what that is. doesn't really say what it is. It just says optional. So that's got to be something to do with it being a taxi. <laughs> anyway, that can go in anywhere in your interior. Here in panel 4 you can see our radiator being glued to the front of the radiator support on our body. We also have our windshield being glued up in here with the back glass, of course, and our rear view mirror. Our firewall will go up into here, underneath the hood, and then our completed interior will glue up into the body. There are two loops here, so there will be two pins up in the body, as we'll see. And then we also get our suitcases, which are basically two pieces, a front and a back, and those will glue together just like that. Panel 6 shows our body being glued all together in the final assembly. So what we have here is the hood, which goes right into there. We do have a battery which will be glued up onto the radiator support. We have the little taxi light which glues up into the center of the roof. We also have our side mirror being glued in place, rear view mirror. Our front grille getting put on and the back grille being placed in. We also have our red tail lamps which go into there and there. And then the entire body drops onto the chassis where it will be screwed into place up into these tubes in the front and in the back. Here we have our Ford Galaxy body for 1970. You can see just how long this thing is. It is quite big. So there's my hand <laughs> for reference. So again, it is a, quite a big body on here. There is a lot of flash on this thing. I will not lie. But yeah, you can see there's your four doors, so it is longer than your regular two-door ver variation. And then here we've got our side marker lights, as well as those wonderful door handles. There is a section here we will have to remove out of there, but uh, overall it's not actually a bad casting. There's our windshield wipers right up on that little grill there. This is sort of before they were hidden under the hood, I guess, or I don't know if Ford did that, maybe later on into the 70s. But uh, there's a script across the back, which again is quite nice on that trunk lid. 
So here we can see the posts. You're going to be screwing your chassis into there. There are some mold marks underneath here, up on the roof and whatnot, which would need to be addressed if you want a nice tight fit of all your parts. And then round two has their mark right in here. This came out in 2021. Boy, time goes by pretty fast. I remember this coming out and everybody getting excited for it. And here I am almost three years later doing a review video of it. So, wow, time went fast. I got this as a birthday present, actually. So this one is mine. But if you want one of your own, check us out at the website, scrolling across here, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Next up, we have our interior bucket. And this one is actually quite plain. The uh, door molding is not really that deep on here. In fact, it's almost... Well, I can kind of feel it with my thumb there, but it is really shallow. The back seat is actually quite nicely done. There are mold marks in here, but they are elevated, so they'll e be easily sanded off with a flat block of sandpaper is what I'm trying to say here. There isn't actually a mold mark. Ah, uh, yeah, they are. They're a little bit in the corners there. It's hard to see on this yellow plastic where things are. You can see a loop here in the front and a little half of a loop. Those will click into place on the body on those little pins that are right there and up in the front. So don't remove those because that's your alignment for the interior. Overall, this is pretty basic. Um, bottom is nice and clean. But uh, yeah, there's some spots there to remove and that's where it was apart attached to the parts tree. But overall, I mean, it's quite simple for what it is. And finally, we have our chassis pan. Now up from this end, there are mold marks in here, which will need to be cleaned up in order to get this to fit down properly. And they're especially prevalent right here on the tops of the fenders. So uh, again, you'll have to clean those up. Easily to sand off with a sanding block or your number 16 hobby blade. Up underneath, there is quite a bit of detail in here, which is nice. There's the fuel cell, and then here's the bottom of the trunk. Now, unfortunately, because you're screwing in, you get these great big holes in here. But, you know, what you could do is screw this, this all together and then fill this over with... I would fill it with a disc, a plastic disc, actually, and then putty it in and shape this thing. Uh, that could be a bit tricky. I don't know. It's all what you want to do. Or you could do it ahead of time and not screw it together and just glue it together. That's an option. But then uh, I think you do need a bit of that tension in there with the screws going down into those tubes in there. Overall, this shouldn't take too long to put together. And if you want to see just how this fits, just as a test, this is how it goes down. So you got the body, you got your interior drop into place and then you've got your chassis pan. Now once you clean up all these little bits in here where it was hooked up to the parts tree and get this all nice and flat it will actually fit together quite nicely. Just line those up the uh, chassis with the tubes and then they should just screw in right into place and look really nice. So overall all these parts fit together without any gaps which is quite a uh, a nice feet in there and will look really good once it's on your shelf all painted up in the proper colors. Here we have the front of the bench seat, the steering wheel and this entire suspension exhaust pipe uh, single piece. So what we have is our mufflers back here and the tailpipes, the mufflers here. I think some of these are called resonators and some of them are called mufflers. I kind of forget which is which. And then we have our rear axle with these trailing arms here, as well as our drive shaft. So let's bring this up to the camera and just take a look. Again, this is meant to be built sort of quickly. So it's a great project for the beginning modeler to uh, go from snap together into a glue kit. So basically what you do is clean up all your seam lines on here and paint this as one piece. So paint it all like gloss or satin black and then come in here with your metal paint so a steel color and paint these like an aluminum or something like that just to make it look a little different the only uh, problem i see with our steering wheel is in the mold process 
it's actually it's actually bent you can see it's not a perfect ring on here so easily enough though this is nice and thin so once I get it cut out <clears throat> once I get it cut out of here I can actually bend the ring flat just by pushing it down a bit and get that contour of the steering wheel corrected out now our front bench seat is really nicely detailed in here and uh, looks terrific the only downside with this interior is there's no seat belts now if you're running a taxi you will need seat belts of course and I do believe in 1970 they would just be lap belts but you can pick those up from the AMT 1949 Ford model kit there and there and uh, that would be great unfortunately they're not in this kit where they're actually quite needed now on this parts tree we actually get the back of the front bench seat and we get our hood and as a bonus feature you get this engine plug so if you don't want to build the engine which we're going to take a look at a little later on you can actually just glue this right into that hole where the engine is supposed to go in the chassis and it's still got the holes in the side of the engine block for that metal axle to go through so let's just bring this up to the camera this isn't the most detailed engine plug that I've seen it's very basic I mean look at the shapes you got like a half circle here and then you've got a rectangle box right there and then sort of tubes going in here but you know once it's painted up and everything it, it should look pretty decent I'll say and turning this over on your hood you've got those mold marks in the four corners so you want to remove those as well as maybe on the inside of the back seat it looks like there's some pins here just to align it up so bringing back the parts tree from earlier we could see that it would fit in much like that with the roll being at the top of the seat so again you know very basic something that would look good on your new york taxi our next parts tree has our four wheels included now the ones with a little cap in the center those go on the front because that is your bearing cap which is going on the front of the axles your front axles <laughs> and in the back there is no bearing cap so the flat plate is for the rear wheels now here you've got your intake for your engine this is for the uh, the radiator and then here you've got your belts and pulleys you've got the lower oil pan and then you've got this flat piece I'm not quite sure what that is maybe when we turn it over oh it's our radiator <laughs> and then here you've got the dashboard now one thing I want to just show here is you've got the instrument panel on your dashboard right here and it's all raised and the little buttons and everything are in here that's because this was molded way back in the day when there were no dashboard decals and you actually had to paint all of those so now if you're going to apply the decal you have to get rid of all this so that the decal lies down flat because otherwise it's going to be held up on the points here and on all this detail so that's sort of the downside what you could do though is just use the decals as an illustrated reference if you want to paint this with a brush and the dry brushing techniques now take a look at this dashboard you got the glove box way down here <laughs> and yet you've got all this padding in here that was a safety dash sort of feature that Ford had back in the day this would all be padded you know to save you in a crash anyway there's room down here on the dash to glue in the radio so or the meter uh, so there you go so look again at this great detailing remember you're going to be covering these with those <laughs> dog dish hubcaps but you could also leave the steel wheel here as it is and just paint it and uh, paint your little bolts on there just leave the hubcaps off if you want to show that detail again really nice work on here the radiator is really tiny in these that was sort of a 70s thing they were trying to save some weight in the cars so they made the radiators lower my Oldsmobile is like that and they have a bad tendency to overheat there is some flash on the ends of these wheels which you'll have to clean up and remove and uh, that'll help them roll nicely in the chassis our next parts tree includes all the engine components that we need so we've got our right and left hand side engine block with the notch in here and that's for the axle to go through the metal axle our front water pump 
We also have the uh, carburetor right here, and there's our fan, and then we've got our exhaust manifolds and our cylinder heads, as well as the intake manifold and the battery. The battery to me looks really undersized in this kit. <clears throat> Very basic. Uh, here, I've done a video on batteries before, but these are sort of the kind of batteries that you end up with in some of the other models. And as you can see, I mean, this thing is huge in comparison to the one in this kit. That battery, of course, is being one from a, from a Model A. But here's more of a 70s style battery. And even that one is almost double the size. So again, it's a kind of an underpowered battery for the type of engine that this thing is. But I don't know. I don't know how accurate that is to the real car. Who's to say? But overall, I mean, the parts on this are quite basic. It's a standard manual transmission here. And uh, those are the linkage points for the shifter. So you could always add a little detail in there just to hook it all together. On the bottom side, there are some mold marks in here, I do believe, which I need to flatten down. Again, it's kind of hard to look at this yellow and figure out where all these little imperfections are. So here on this parts tree, there are a lot of kind of interesting components that are carryovers from the police car version of the kit. One of them being the wooden bumper in the front. This is like a push bar thing for uh, chasing down criminals and whatnot. And that would not really be on the taxi. So the parts you're going to use are the firewall. And then these are engine components in here. So those will be added on. But like here, you've got a rifle. And you're not going to be using that. In well, maybe you might be. I don't know. And then I'm not sure what this is. I think it's part of mounting the rifle on or something for the police car. And I do believe this is part of the light bar from the police car kit. So a lot of that's going to be eliminated for your taxi version. However, take a look at that firewall. Again, you've got your heater right there and uh, some of the great electrical components going on. So painting the wires on this will be quite a joy. And um, you've got your distributor cap right there. You've got your coil, your starter motor. Not quite sure what that is either. But overall, that is the final yellow plastic component, and it does look quite good once it's in your car. So here we have the newly tooled AMT parts for this kit, and you know they're newly tooled when they're actually molded in white and as opposed to yellow. No, I'm only kidding there. But uh, AMT did decide to choose to use white here, which is quite nice. Here you've got the taxi light. Now, I'm not sure if you could actually put a light in here and have it shine through the white plastic. I don't know. Um, just depends on how translucent this plastic is. It looks pretty solid, so I don't know if that would work. But there you've got the meter, and then here you've got your luggage. You've got a... looks like a small case and a large case. So again, really nice stuff. Too bad it's not hinged, because that would be quite neat. You'd have to remove the mold marks, but you could actually... Maybe you could glue this, you know, being open, and you could <laughs> put some clothes in here or something like that, just for a little bit of a coolness factor that uh, some of the other model builders might not have thought of. Next up, we have our chrome components, and there is a lot of stuff here that's carried over from the police car. So if you actually want to build this as a police car, I'm going to fill you in as to what these are. So what we have here is, of course, our front grille and our rear bumper. And we've got our dog dish hubcaps. We also have the air cleaner and those valve covers for the engine, as well as our side mirror, I do believe. And then our rear view mirror over here. Now, let's get into what's of the police car on here, because what I just described is what you're going to need for the taxi. So I'm also going to bring over those parts from before. So just to sort of reiterate what's going on here, what we have here is the mounting bit for the radio, and this is the speaker for the radio. Now there you got your weapon, and here you've got the part of the light bar. So I'm just moving those out of the way. So bringing this up to the camera for the police car, you have the CB radio, or actually no, this is a spotlight off the side, handheld spotlight. Then you've got the CB radio that is 
the um, microphone there on your old Motorola. This little loop is the clip that goes around the gun. That's to uh, act as a weapon lock and to mount it to the dashboard. Here you've got your police antenna. You could also use this for the taxi, of course, for uh, your fares. Now here you've got the radio receiver. And then this here is the radio transmitter. And then you've got a fire extinguisher. Oh, these are the breathers for the valve covers here. Now, these are your police lights going up there. I do believe that, what is that, a floor shifter or something? I'm not 100% sure. There's a fire extinguisher also for the police car. These are the mounting brackets for your siren, or actually for your lights. That's what these would, this yellow bar would go into. So you cut these off and then you mount them to the car and these little pins are sticking straight up and down and that goes into the light bar. And these are the light bases for the light bar. And then you've got your siren as well. And um, yeah, there's a uh, flasher units in here somewhere. Oh, that's those. So yeah, you've got all your police car components. So again, take a look at that grill though. You've got everything molded in place, so you're going to need to add a little bit of a wash in here just to make those look like proper headlights, and then flood them with some clear paint. Then off the back, you got your backup lights as well. And these hook in using those loops, and those would go in on the chassis onto those bars that are coming out of the uh, bottom of the car, actually the tubes. And then your screws will go in there through your chassis and all the rest just to lock all those in place. Basically your promo style front grills and rear bumpers. Next up we have our clear components which include the windshield front and the rear glass as well as our red stop lights in the back. And what you can do if you want to go a little more advanced is to cut these runners out of here and just glue in the windshield free form as well as the rear glass. The rear glass actually has a pin so it's easier to mount up here but you could easily glue this into the windshield frames so again that would be quite easy and that saves you trying to get rid of all these mold marks and seam lines and numbers that are in these runners for a more professional look but if that's you know a little difficult just leave the runners in because your windows will line up perfectly. Now let's take a look at the rear lights. These are nicely molded and they do actually have the proper detail in them. Take a look at the actual Ford tail lights because there might be something in here that acts as a turn signal or a backup light. Not 100% sure. There are pins in the back and these will go into those holes in the rear bumper and look pretty nice. Next up we have our Goodyear Custom Wide Tread Polyglass Tires. Now these are completely new from round two, and what we had before in my police car kit was AMT Firestone Supreme tires. Now these are narrower compared to the new and improved Goodyear tires by almost, well I won't say half a tire, but by quite a bit. Like this, if this is a full one, this one is three quarters. So again, you can see that AMT has been recently replacing the tires in these kits with some brand new ones. And I do believe these wider ones would actually fit on the wheels better than the narrower ones, but that's yet to be seen. So anyway, taking a look at this, the actual Goodyear lettering is quite low and almost shallow. You almost don't know they're Goodyears unless you're really looking for that. But that tread pattern is quite nice and it's quite tight and that would be more to scale in 125th than what we had with those Firestone Supremes which again are still a nice tread on here but these ones are just loop around and there's no actual tread detail whereas these ones move in and out. Now I'm going to compare them to actual oops the AMT polyglass tires that they used to make just so you can see how they look. So here we have the original Goodyear Polyglass GT tires, which have been in these model kits, the 70s style AMT model cars, even the 60s AMT model cars. These ones have been in there for a long time. And this is the newer style that AMT has just released under around two. So these would be like AMT, AMT Ertl, blah, blah, blah. 
and AMT RC Ertl, and these ones are AMT Round 2. So, first off, the original tires had the lettering sticking out quite a bit, so with a bit of white paint you could paint those on easily, whereas the new ones, they're really like barely even printed on there. The tread pattern on the old one and the new one are pretty much the same. However, the old one was more open, as you can see here, than the new one, which is more closed and tighter together. So I think the new one represents 125th scale better than the old one, which was just sort of there to make it look like a tire tread. However, if you look at images of the Goodyear Polyglass GT tires, they do look quite like this. So I do think the newer ones are more improved. It does seem like a thicker plastic, or polyvinyl, whatever these are made out of, than the older ones, which are more hollow and squishable. The gap in here is wider as well. And one thing that the old ones had is they used to have a web in here that you had to cut out with your hobby knife and go around and trim up. I've trimmed this one up just to make it uh, fit better on my tire spinning tool which is right here, a 7 16th socket, I do believe. But that's what it looks like when it goes on there. Whereas this one is a lot thicker, it will actually hold there when I spin the tread. So again, I think the newer one is, of course, improved from the older one, but it's hard to say which one is actually more accurate when it's on the car itself. Uh, yeah, 7 sixteenths <laughs> for my tire spinning tool. If you want to learn how to spin your own tires, check out this video right there. In this bag, we have the metal screws for attaching the body and chassis together, as well as our metal axles for applying our wheels. Here we have our decal sheet for our taxi. And as you can see, you get a lot of different taxi company designs. So here we just have a generic taxi. Then we have the airport taxi service. We also have a cab number, which is the actual cab, not the phone number for the taxi company. Down here would be the phone number for the taxi company. And then here we have curb hub hugger cabs, Cali cat cabs, and you could use the cat from AMT on that. And then we also have this generic taxi one with the checkers in here. So this could be checker cab. We also have a cab service here. We've got air conditioning. Maybe that's what that weird thing was on the instruction sheet, an air conditioner uh, unit or something. Now we also have two different types of instrument decals. This is for our dashboard. Now here we got wood grain in the center and around the edges, and this one is more like a chrome style or brushed aluminum or something. Down here we've got California, and we also have Florida license plates, as well as a generic taxi one. But if you want to print your own license plates, check out this video right here, and I'll show you how to do that using your computer. We also have Taxi 321 down here if you don't want to use 206. There's a larger 206 as well. And then we have these rate cards, which would go on the side of the cab. All these little weird stickers down here, those are for the luggage. You've got Canada, there was New York, and a couple of others, maybe Paris or something that I saw on here. And then here we have decals for the side marker lights as well. And uh, more of those sort of brochures or whatever they are that go on the side, as well as the AMT logo. So again, another really stellar looking decal sheet, and that you could use these on different cabs that you have in your collection. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to show you this amazing 1970 Ford Galaxy Taxi from AMT. So how many of you built this in the past? Let us know down in the comments below just how much you enjoyed it, or maybe you didn't enjoy it at all, I'm not too sure. And if you are looking to buy one of these great model kits, check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca so that you too can also get one of these great taxis while supplies last. If I'm sold out and they don't produce them anymore, well, there's always eBay. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, uh, have you ever considered becoming a member of this channel? 
If you become a member, that way you can give us a little bit each month. It's right here on YouTube. You just got to click the membership button. And there are some privileges in the chats and whatever else. And your little donation will help us to grow financially and to get some new kits in the future and whatnot. So always consider that. And uh, I would thank you very much if you did become a member. So until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.